consider item number, items number eight, one through eight on page 10, which were possible debt speak office options. And ask us to make all eight of those mandatory. And I think uh, in order to uh, show a certain amount of deference to the planning board's request, I think number eight in particular addresses what I believe is many of the green uh, uh, environmental sensitive issues because it is a requirement uh, that the project uh, demonstrate that it will meet the requirements in order to achieve a lead, leadership and energy design, sewer rating, or greater. Uh, and that uh, I'm suggesting that you accept that recommendation of plan for and make number eight mandatory, but not accept the recommendations that number one through seven and make your favorite. Uh, can you um, give me a rather general definition of affordable housing, not only for my education, but for those members of the audience who may view affordable housing as something other than what you're going to describe to us? Right. So affordable, uh, you know, affordable housing <coughs> uh, is, uh, some people think of it as Section 8 housing, which is uh, a voucher system for a low uh, income. Affordable housing is uh, moderate uh, and low, and it's a function of the percentage of the average uh, income in the area. Uh, I don't have numbers in front of me, I apologize. Um, but uh, I think most people would be surprised. Well, first, to qualify for affordable housing, you have to have a job. Um, you still have to be uh, certain card checks and, and uh, background checks. So you have to be able to afford to pay the rent. And you have to, you have, to have an income in the it's not. It's not free housing. It's not. Uh, so if it's tied to the percentage of the average income in the area, and I can get for you before they need the exact uh, income and the levels and the percentages of the rent rent they would pay for those four values. It's also a function of uh, youth and bank accounts. Uh, there's requirements for one, two, and three bank accounts, uh, which is a formulaic uh, requirement for the identity of the council of the four lines. So would a sorry, would a, would a senior member of the community who may be living on a fixed income also be eligible? Yes. Even if they don't have a job with they retire? Yeah, yes. I mean, uh, 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 like a, a new uh, police officer with a uh, large family might be qualified. The, I mean, we have to go through the income numbers, but it's not, you, you need to have income to qualify for affordable housing, and it's tied to the, uh, the rents are tied to the a percentage of the average medium income for the area. And I can provide you between now and then because it's a four million, there's a number of different numbers you want to see. I can give you all that information so you have it for the median. And, and the median income that you refer to for the area is county wide, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's county wide. Yeah. So, so all the towns within Mama County are aggregated and then a median the income. Area. And then we can we figure out what is near moderate and low income based on. Yeah. yeah, it's best to, I'll give you the precise numbers and I'll send it by email. <coughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I looked it up before. With, with, uh, I did, yeah. But I will say, I'll let you do it. Thank you. And then the last thing, Joe, just um, would this make this, uh, this redevelopment area of compliant with a smart, uh, smart growth development program? Uh, so that's more of a planner question, but I will thank Chris is here, but I think you can say yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the council have any questions? Mr. Dowell. So for members of the public, what, unless there's an objection from the council, the first thing we are going to do is entertain. First thing we're going to do, can you hear me now? Is entertain. It, it is on. Is entertain a motion to um, reject uh, ordinance 2018-31, an ordinance adopting a redevelopment plan for the property identified as the DNA property. So I'll make that motion to reject. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, roll call. Councilman Taylor? 
Yes. Councilor Weinstrom? Yes. Councilor Ballard? Yes. Councilor Zipperich? Yes. Councilor Hart? Yes. All right, so the ordinance is rejected. We then move forward on our attorney's recommendation with respect to introducing and only introducing ordinance 2018-36, which is an ordinance adopting a redevelopment plan for the property identified as the DNA board for ordinance. Where did the board come from? Okay. Excuse me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, 2018-40. Is there a motion to introduce? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Taylor? Yes. Councilman Yingstrom? Yes. Councilman Ballard? Yes. Councilman Zimbridge? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. Okay, when will the public hearing be? The public hearing will be on December 12th at 6.30 p.m. Okay. Now we go to um, ordinance 2018 An ordinance, um, a bond ordinance providing for the 2018 capital improvement program um, appropriating $3,374,800 and authorizing the issuance of $2,637,800 in bonds. Motion to introduce, uh, open, motion to open the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any members of the public wish to address this body? Seeing none, motion to yeah. Address a, about anything? No, the bond no, ordinance. Oh, the bond ordinance. ordinance. No. Okay. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Roll call. Yeah. Motion to the motion to second. Yes. Councilman Taylor? Yes. Councilman Yangstrom? Yes. Councilman Ballard? Yes. Councilman Zimbridge? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. Bond ordinance is adopted. Bond ordinance 2018 34, providing for various improvements to the water and sewer utility and appropriating $1,450,000 and authorizing $1,450,000 in bonds. Motion to open to the public. So, so second. second. All in favor? Aye. Any members of the public wish to comment on this bond ordinance? Seeing none, is there a motion to close? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, motion to uh, adopt? So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Taylor? Yes. Councilman Yingstrom? Yes. Councilman Ballard? Yes. Councilman Zimbridge? Yes. Councilman Ward? Yes. The bond ordinance is adopted. Bond ordinance 2018-35, providing for improvements in the parking utility in the borough and appropriating $422,000 in the issue. $122,000 in bonds. Motion to go uh, Good. Does that hold the public? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any members of the public wish to be heard on this bond ordinance? If not, motion to close the public. Second. Second. Motion to um, adopt. So Second. Roll call. Councilman Taylor? Yes. Councilman Yangstrom? Yes. Councilman Ballard? Yes. Councilman Tippridge? Yes. Councilman Woodward? Yes. Bond ordinance is adopted. Resolution 1874 authorizing the reorganization of the 20, 2019 meeting of the governing body. Motion? So, second. Yeah, okay. I think it's something about here. I think Any objection to doing all of them by consent? I only have one question. Go ahead. Uh, 18281 resolution authorizing transfer of 2018 charge bond. Sure. Uh, Councilman and the, the full governing body, and, uh, I'm sorry, thank you, for the full governing body and for public. Um, this represents two major transfers, really. One of them is, uh, you know, we are uh, doing well in some line items in terms of not spending what was budgeted for. Uh, and so that's a good thing, but we want to make sure that our snow reserves are adequately filled. So we're transferring, uh, I want to say almost 15 into their snow, snow reserves. So uh, as you know, uh, the beginning of the year, we experienced a very inclement uh, snow season. I'm talking about January, February, March. Uh, so that had quite an impact on the budget and we just had a snowstorm and uh, we don't want to be caught uh, unprepared for the rest of December should there be more snow. So we're transferring some money into the, uh, that line of account. And then the other one is for uh, legal bills. We want to make sure that uh, 
know, pending outstanding litigation uh, from the past that we're working on settling now uh, is adequately able to be paid to you know, what our deductibles are with the insurance and co-insurance as well. So that's what represents the bulk of that. So those are the two main items. So are, are the transfers coming from the same account or the different accounts? Uh, different accounts within this year's budget. Um, and I will pull that up for you. So um, they are coming out of this one. Uh, they will be coming out of uh, engineering uh, and street lighting. So uh, our street lighting, we are uh, sufficiently funded there for the rest of the year. So we're able to afford about 15000 to move into our snow uh, line account. And from our engineering services, transfer that into our legal services. So we've been doing well by way of, again, engineering services. Uh, and managing those costs uh, more than what was budgeted, and so we're putting those into our legal services where settlement uh, agreements for past litigation will be paid for uh, should be settled. Thank you. So, see, does that move into the Snow Trust? That won't move into the Snow Trust. The Snow Trust is outside of the capital, correct, just within our operating. If it ends up, uh, again, not being used, at the end of the year, once the, bud, once the books are closed, then we can move it into the trust. So you won't just grind it. No, we are not running. <coughs> and just a clarification in case anybody asks, uh, on Resolution 280, we are authorizing the appointment of Michael Deacon Fitzgerald Esquire as special counsel for the Federal of Red Bank. Mr. Fitzgerald is the lead counsel in a class action lawsuit of which the girl is joining in, and it is against Lexus Nexus, and it is as a result of our diligent efforts in looking at operations business and Mr. Fitzgerald is including the borough of Red Bank in that class that action lawsuit because evidently there are some contractual deviations that have been identified and so this lawsuit is not costing us a penny nor if there's a counterclaim or cost us anything but again just like we did on a number of other occasions earlier in the year we're being proactive in protecting the tax base by uh, going against whatever uh, is legally possible for the borough to accomplish. So, uh, we're, we've got some fairly good assurances that this is going to be a uh, successful uh, action by the borough. So it's not costing us a penny, but it's only on the agency basis. So that's what that is. And I know that uh, Councilman <coughs> Engstrom and our borough attorney know Mr. Fitzgerald very well, and very capable and competent council. So uh, with that clarification, is there a motion to move all of the resolutions from 18 to 74? Mr. Mayor, is there a public comment? 18 to 82. Uh, so moved. Hold on. Okay. We're going to be moving it, but what's, what's your question? Come on up. I have a question about a resolution. Well, he's got a public comment on the resolution. I, I, I should I make a comment before you vote on it? Just well, you should have made a comment before. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It was kind of open for In the future. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, so, numbers lost. It. Yeah. Um, I, a couple real quick. Um, the Red Bank Affordable Housing Corporation to serve as COA's administrative agent. Um, according to the state statute, the whoever is appointed in that role is essentially um, they're an arm of the uh, governing body. Um, there's responsible oversight. It looks like you're appointing somebody for that. So However, they, are, they have to be a nonprofit organization that's current with all of their filings. Red Bank Affordable Housing Corporation has not made filings since 2016. Um, they're not uh, up to date on their, fi on their IRS Form 990 filings. Beyond that, there's been, um, there's been some question with just this kind of an FYI from a credibility standpoint. Um, there are plenty of pe there are people who uh, you're supposed to provide oversight into their process for selection, and I, it, it, from what I understand, the selection process has not been random, but has been favored, and potentially even phone calls have been made. Now that's an unsubstantiated allegation, but um, I'm not making an allegation. But what I would highly recommend is that somebody at the borough do some diligence before you make this appointment because they're not a current nonprofit. Moreover, there is an employee there. Does anybody know who that employee is? Can anybody on the governing body of the borough council or um, 
tell me who the employee is for the Red Bank Affordable Housing Corporation and what they're paid for. Who's Bailey? What would this be, Mr. Mayor? Continue your public comment. No, no, I'm asking a question. That's not a question. This is public comment. So okay. Your comment. Okay. I strongly recommend the borough do their diligence, provide some actual oversight, take a look at their Form 990 filings, forget about political alliances, also look into who actually got some of the units at Cedar Crossing. Has anybody ever been to a party at Cedar Crossing recently? From a Democrat volunteer? Yeah, you have. And that, and that person, one of those two people there, they weren't randomly selected. What, who's done art on the selection process? So I strongly recommend you do that before you make this appointment. My second comment is on um, Monmouth Telecom. Is that the telecom company we've had, or is that a new one? New one. Okay. The, um, they may have done business in the past. Yeah, I, I was yeah. just curious. I know the last one we selected was yeah, this, this one, this is actually a company that's new coming into New York. Great. Has anybody, so if anybody's actually looked at any ratings they get from any business, they're pretty much all terrible. Like one star out of, you know, and, it's, and there are enough reviews in enough different places. Um, they're basically all, and their business model is, I don't know these people, I don't know what they do, but all they do is resell Verizon's discount package at a profit. So maybe someone just call it Verizon, see if we get a better deal. Maybe we table this. Just a thought. I don't know what the process was. Thank you. I want to apologize for not, you know, being able to get in on the comment section. You're, 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 yeah. You've got to identify yourself for the record, William. William Pope, Thank you. Uh, Red Bank and OACD. Yeah. Uh, is this on? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, incidentally, I do oh, agree with uh, Mr. DeSoma on uh, the uh, COA administrative agent. I don't really understand what role that uh, uh, agency is going to entail. Uh, in addition, I mean, there's one instant, in, instance, as you understand, COA and WACB is very much involved in COA. And there was one time where there was a meeting that was happening, and I was trying to uh, uh, the President of the NWACP asked me to attend. I was trying to get some information on this particular subject. <coughs> I ran into Mr. Ziad, uh, where I, I, I had some very, very uncomfortable uh, interaction with him. He, he would not even let me know where the meeting was going to happen. And at the meeting, the interactions there were not good at all. And I reported that to the NWACP. I think we need to look a little bit more into this appointment. And WCP ought to be somehow involved in understanding what this contract is going to entail and uh, some of the issues that Mr. DeSoma brought up I think are very pertinent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So maybe we should take the resolutions individually. Is that correct? Yeah, we pulled out one off there. Well, why don't we go through each one? Because there's a little bit confusion. Okay, this is what I was going to do. We already did number one. Resolution 18275, authorizing premiums on the five year old premiums on both those leads. Motion? No, it's like a little bit of order. I thought we did. Uh, we stopped in the middle. Uh, I sent the motion for consent. No vote was taken. Okay, vote on 274. Motion is seven. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Resolution 275, authorizing premiums more than five years old and premiums on foreclosed leads to be transferred to the borough of Red Bank. Motion, one more. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Resolution 276, awarding a contract to Mammoth Telecom for telephone and internet service. Is there a motion on that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution 277, authorizing the Borough Red Bank to enter into a contract with the Red Bank Affordable Housing Corporation to serve as the borough's COA administrative agent. Is there a motion on that? Motion to table. Motion to table by Councilman Ballard. Is there a second? I'm oh, sorry? Is there a second? Okay, Councilman Zipperich. All in favor of the motion to table? Aye. Okay, so it, Roll we'll we'll call on that, yeah. Motion to table. Councilman Taylor? Yes. Councilor Hamster? No. Councilman Ballard? Yes. Councilman Zibridge? Yes. Councilman Zipperich? 
That's from the board. No. So that's tabled. Uh, resolution 274, awarding professional service contract to CME uh, for the February, sorry, 278, uh, for the New Jersey Infrastructure Program application for White Street Improvements. Motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And opposed. 279, requesting approval of special items of revenue and appropriations. FM uh, Global Fire Prevention Grant. Motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? 280. Resolution retaining Michael Fitzgerald to represent the Borough Red Bank in a class action lawsuit against Lexus Nexus. Motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution 281 authorizing the transfer of the 2018 current fund. Motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Resolution 282. Resolution granting environmental remediation to financial services LLC request to conduct warnings and install three temporary monitoring devices on behalf of Raymond the Brown Cabbage and Ray Graff Realty on the public roadway adjacent to Harding and Clay Street. Motion. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. There are no proclamations, payment of vouchers, being resolved by the mayor and council of the bills be paid on the attached check registry totally. $5,718,783.43, and this would be Resolution 18-283. Motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any old business there? Yes, if, if I may. Um, can I ask the, the governing body if, if perhaps I can shed some light on uh, Resolution 18-277 uh, so that perhaps it may be able to be advanced this evening? So, oh, yeah, do, are we? I mean, we're not under contract with that for uh, administrative reasons. Right, so at, at this point, if we don't approve a contract with an administrative agent, we will be without an administrative agent. Uh, I also heard, Councilman, that there were some concerns, obviously, from the public. One of them uh, was absolutely incorrect. The NAACP was at the meeting at which this was discussed. The NAACP has been a party to the negotiation for the Fair Share Housing Center. And the NAACP has specifically requested that this action be taken as part of the settlement agreement. So any intimation by Mr. Poku to the contrary uh, is false and is not representative of the wishes of the NAACP. Um, so it's a mischaracterization by him, much like much of what he comes up here in the short amount of time that I've been here is a mischaracterization. Uh, additionally, uh, the role of an administrative agent, to my knowledge, is that they are not required to be a nonprofit. This particular role is different, I think, than what other people may be talking about. There are a number of administrative agent agencies in the state that are nonprofits. In fact, planning agencies and engineering agencies in the state of New Jersey that offer planning services who are for profit can also provide administrative agent services. You can also have an employee of the borough be an administrative agent. So uh, the fact that uh, they are a nonprofit that has not handled their IRS paperwork uh, up to this point is really inconsequential to this because once you enter that contract, they will then be required to submit a number of compliance documents, a number of contractual uh, paperwork, uh, you know, 1099 paperwork, a lot of other information that is necessary to actually execute and consummate that agreement. And the intent of this resolution, just like any other resolutions and contract, is to have the borough council, the clerk, the CFO, and myself ensure that all their paperwork is, compl is in compliance. Yes, so, can I just stop you for yes. a second? Are you aware of what the deadline for filing that particular paperwork would be? I, I am not a, I'll be honest, I'm not a contestant on it, but it, you can always file it really at any point. Now, there are deadlines every year, sort of like you and I would file our tax paperwork. Um, so, and certain 990s are not required to be filed, I know, uh, unless an entity meets certain criteria. criteria. Yeah, exactly. So, um, whatever is needed to be filed, they will be required to file it and provide evidence of such with us. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. If you want to amend the resolution to be subject to the Borough Administrator or Borough Attorney or Coen Council's review of their documentation, I mean, essentially an allegation is level. You know, I have no idea. Well, if it's true or not. But if it is true, then we need to make sure that we catch it. If it's not true, then it shouldn't stop the borough business. So if you wanted to amend the resolution, make it subject 
to the review of Joe Balvin or me or some combination of us. I don't have a problem with this, but especially the great concern that Mr. Hussle raised. This vote right now, we don't know if it's true or not. My objection, my objection, my objection is that this particular entity has no experience in these matters, and we have experienced company that's been doing it, or organizations, I should say, that's been doing it. I don't see a real hyper that I've this in exactly the process of that, but I think we're probably such a good Mr. Taylor, could you speak loud? We had had an issue with the current. Get the target of the microphone, Mark. I'm trying to. I think the answer is. Can you hear me? 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 Can you so I want to thank you, Steve, because those were my concerns. The concerns brought out by the audience gave me pause, Steve. Gave me pause. Um, I just wanted uh, to table so we can get that information cleared up. You cleared it up for me. I'm okay with, uh, as the attorney said, reintroducing with the uh, changes yeah. I mean, your pick is your pick. I just, I want to stress to you that whatever the issues are with this that have been leveled are not the reasons why it's being held up. Uh, Council has brought up another point. Again, that's your decision. But I just want to clarify some of the facts that were raised about this because one gentleman walked out and um, did, you know, made some comments that were inaccurate and left the building. So I don't know that it's fair to all of you to, to act if you were based on reliance on that information. So I wanted to make sure that this was clarified today. So hey, a little due diligence never hurt anything. No. Absolutely. Based upon that uh, discussion we just had and a clarification from uh, both Mr. Cannon and Mr. Kennedy, is there a motion to introduce ordinance from the floor uh, 18 dash to a yeah, resolution to a floor. No, we have to give it a new, new number. <coughs> so, we tabled that. So, we don't have to give it a new number? No, okay, the motion is to be set. We consider it. A motion to reconsider, and then a motion on the actual. All right. All right. Motion to amend. So, move. So, move. So, move. So, move. So, move. Subject to review, what do you want to do? Joe Bowden's review. Subject to Mr. Bowden's review. So we have to hang attorney. This is the conversation. I'm hanging attorney because it's significant. I'm trying to have the agent doing it. 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 i am Okay, motion to amend. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Just, just uh, to clarify the record, the motion is to amend the resolution to be subject to the borrow attorney and administrator's review of the contractual documents to ensure that the entity is appropriately qualified under the applicable statutes. Correct. Thank you. So motion to amend the second is going to pass. Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Or not? Roll call. Roll call. Okay, yeah, roll call. 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 Roll no new business. Uh, I just have one, one quick item. Uh, Mayor, the uh, left bank is holding their annual toy drive. Um, anybody interested in, in uh, donating toys um, to lunch break, you can go to lunchbreak.org uh, and uh, schedule your donation through their website. Audience. The couple's been sitting here since 6 o'clock. Right? Mr. Forrest. Oh, thank you, Mayor. I thought you were patiently waiting. Getting involved. Delicious. Get this thing. 
Hello? Hello? <laughs> no, I'm still dead. 16 Locust <laughs> Avenue. Um, just uh, wanted to comment on that, I guess that double resolution that I don't completely understand. I did my best to follow the redevelopment attorney. But um, I, I wanted to uh, express a concern that A, um, I'd like, I wanted to testify on that tonight, and you know, it was moved around, and I have to comment now during public portion, which I know there's some, some limits on time, but I would have liked to have had an opportunity to comment before the vote was taken. Uh, and I, I've always, and I've said this before at these meetings, one of the things I like about the way you structure the meeting is that you do have that thing here about the public comment on ordinances and first readings and resolutions only, and you know, if nothing else, I think it would have been nice um, to uh, allow comment before a vote was taken, even if you, you know, I'm not going to change it, and you know, basically that was, whole thing was gone over and changed without any input from the public, and uh, I think that was an error, but that's just my opinion. Now, um, I want to say that I was at the planning board meeting. There was, a lot of these issues were gone over. Uh, the mayor fought, uh, advocated very effectively and articulately for the higher standard, the 90, as did others. But, you know, the planning board had quite a back and forth about this. And I, I, I really regret it when we don't listen to our bodies uh, that are, you know, our, you know, our governing body, uh, the, these, uh, these committees, planning board, and overrule them here, um, which happens occasionally. I know it hasn't happened yet, but we're considering it. Um, you know, they have been engaged with planning in this town, many of them, for uh, many, many years. And this was not some, like, rubber stamp thing that happened. It was quite uh, a long and usual discussion, I thought. It's a very dense project, even at 80 and 70. 90, to me, seems to be a little over the top, um, especially since the whole thing there, the, the, the intersection that the mayor often talks about, which probably should have a light or something there controlling traffic, is not resolved. Um, and that intersection is dangerous, and I think the, the minimum, the, you know, I, I want affordable housing. I believe in affordable housing. Um, but I am concerned about the density there, and I am concerned also about us, um, you know, being the planning board here. And um, I often, and many of you I know are in favor of revising our master plan, which is really the proper way to plan this stuff. Now, I know I lived with this overlay. I didn't object to it. I not, I, you know, I realize that you're in the real world. Sometimes we have to adopt because we haven't done a new master plan in a long time. But it really bothers me, and I think with great reluctance, should we zone one spot, you know, for custom development. Um, it, it just, it looks bad. It's something we have to do with a great deal of care. It, it's always subject to rumor and innuendo because, you know, you have one entity that controls it and that we're custom zoning it essentially for the one entity and whatever our goals as a town may be. Um, so this whole thing, I think, has to be handled with a great deal of care. And if you're, and I think very strongly, you should weigh with our planning board who you've appointed and who you trust to manage these things in these town very heavily. Um, I mean, the, there was a compromise for 80, um, and I think it was a reasonable compromise. I think I support the planning board's decision here, and I think you should too. And I am disturbed that I didn't get to comment this way before you took the initial vote. I did hear that there were some legal things going on, and I don't know what our exact status is with the affordable housing, and I'm all for affordable housing, but this is very dense on a very busy intersection on the corner of our town, and um, I think we need to think seriously about um, overdevelopment issues here in this particular spot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Parris as well, there will be a public hearing on really uh, about two weeks backwards this time. So. I understand that, but I think I should have had a comment before the vote was taken on this particular day as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to talk about the, uh, the new VNA project. Uh, I was at the planning board meeting as well, uh, and I heard... Mr. Reardon, just your name and address. Oh, yes, sure. Uh, Dan Reardon. Uh, 53 Elm Place. This mic, by the way, is on, but these mics have not been amplifying anything all night long. I didn't hear a thing that this lawyer said. Well, I heard a few things, but it's very difficult to understand. 
So anyway, um, about this site, um, I, in general, one thing that that the, 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 the redevelopment lawyer said, Mr. Brown said, was we're building a box that we can negotiate inside. And I think that's incorrect. We are setting out our opening negotiating position. So if I'm going to hire somebody, and I, I think I could pay them up to $90,000, I don't say at the beginning of the negotiation, I could pay up to $90,000. I say, how does $70,000 sound to you? And they say, oh, 75, okay. Or they say 85, okay. But I don't come out with, I don't start the negotiation by giving everything away. So this ordinance says 90 units per acre. Well, we're not gonna give them 90 units per acre necessarily, we'll negotiate. You gave them 90 units per acre. We're gonna, do we need this to get 30 uh, affordable housing units? There is nothing about 30 affordable housing units in the redevelopment plan. It's not clear to me that the redevelopment plan overrules the zoning because it doesn't say, you know, we're not gonna follow the zoning. Um, but, but so it guarantees no affordable housing. Uh, so I think we should have a redevelopment plan that says here's what we want and then negotiate. And if it turns out they can't do the deal with what we want, then okay, we'll do a new, new redevelopment plan. The redevelopment plan takes what, two weeks? You've got a first reading and then a second reading and boom, new, new redevelopment plan. Um, as far as this meeting our affordable housing obligations, that property is in the H1 affordable housing overlay zone. Uh, so it is a requirement that anyone building there put in 20% of the units be affordable housing. We're giving them 90 units per acre, 2.7 acres, that's 243 apartments going in on that property. By the zoning requirements, that would be 49 affordable housing units. So we're giving them five times the density and asking for half the affordable housing as well, two thirds of the affordable housing units. So uh, we don't have to give away 90 units per acre to get uh, the affordable housing. If we gave them 55 units per acre under the current zoning rules, we would get 30 affordable housing units. They could build 148 units, 20% of that, 30 affordable housing units. We're giving away more than we need to. Um, also at the planning board, there was some talk about how this building will be in scale with what's around it. I took a look at the five most, the four most uh, dense properties nearby, within 800 feet. Uh, Colony House has a density of 68 units. Uh, Granville Tower has a density of 46.7. The 138 Bobman has 34 and a half. 130 Bobman has 16 and a half. This is more dense than anything. The Colony House is the only thing that comes close. It's more than, tw it's twice as dense as anything else. Um, it's not, it's comparable to, uh, it's probably not as dense as Atrium and Riverside, but they're further away. Um, and I, I don't accept the argument that the standard for density is the most dense property. The standard for density is what's around it, Every, all the properties around it. This will increase the density in that area. Um, I also object to the setbacks. The setbacks in that zone are 50 feet because according to the master plan, we need to preserve our river views. They're reducing the, the set, side and rear setbacks to zero. The front setbacks to nine feet or to four feet, depending on where it is. <clears throat> so it's an 82% reduction in the setback. This building, on Bodman and the Route 35 Cooper's Bridge approach will rise straight up off the sidewalk. We'll have a four foot planter, five foot sidewalk building with balconies hanging three feet over. So there's almost, there's no pedestrian zone free of, there's two foot of pedestrian zone free of balcony. Um, I also think, you know, this district has committed to complete streets. And this redevelopment plan does nothing to promote complete streets. It maintains the current 
five foot sidewalk on Route 35, according to the drawings from the engineer in Route 35. So there's no sidewalk envisioned on the property, much less what there should be. A buffer, a bike lane, a, a planting strip, a sidewalk, a frontage zone. That's what the complete streets design guide says. That's what we should have there. That takes 22 feet. There should be a 22 foot setback just to accommodate the complete streets goals. So that's all, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reardon. Mr. Boynton. Maybe there are quick ones. Yeah, we came late. I think you were here at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, P.O. Box 274. Uh, Mr. Miller, I want to thank you and whatever councilmen came to our car raffle this year we had. That's Sorry I miss you. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry I miss you, but they say you spoke very, uh, very nice. I want to thank you for that. Uh, the other thing I got, Mr. Miller, very quick. The parks, is it a borough ordinance for these parks? I'm not here to knock lunch break. I think they're doing a beautiful job, wonderful job, the community. But we, Sunday, went down the field. Corona bottles everywhere. Cups everywhere. Are we allowed to drink beer in the park? No. It's a shame. Was there alcohol? It was alcohol. This is matter. If we're going to have these flags, I'm not knocking no flag football. I think whatever they don't do. Well, if there but was if alcohol have, consumption, it should have been prevented by the police and all the sure that you Well, uh, it was low. I'm serious, Mr. Smith. I got a lot of complaints. People say, Freddie, it was a disaster. Corona bottles everywhere. We can't have this with kids around because remember years ago, it was a big fight. Long Branch and Red Bank. Bus one was there. I was there. And I mean, it was—I mean, it was a—it was a madhouse. We have to check these bags. There's a lot of innocent people going around shooting, so we have to check these bags. Make sure these kids safe in these parks. The other thing I got, Mr. Man, I'm not here to attack the Borough Administrator, but I'm getting a lot of feedback. The Borough Administrator, feedback. Y'all councilors, both by the people in this town. Nobody, I'm the only, I hate to say this, close that. I was the only black man at the council meeting. Sitting there, the borough councilman treated me like I was welcome at his house. Long Branch, I went to council. Asbury, Middletown, Coast Snap, all the way up to Kingsbury I have been up there. Mr. Miller, you know I'm around. And I'm not here exaggerating mine. A lot of these borough ministers. I have talked to even Teddy Falls. Call me back, talk to me just like open arms. Met with the chief of police, coffee, something happened, borough administrator. You don't get that here now. You understand I'm getting this borough administrator. Very rude, which are very fair to the people. We have to ask it. We're not going to allow that in this town. We have to get a march together to do something about it. And you know me, I will do it. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Nassoma, make it quick, please. Thank you guys kept us waiting for an hour, so we're just busting the chops. Uh, Sean Nassoma, downstream. So, you, um, Zeke, can you provide me with um, some information on what um, what was the process used to um, for the uh, for our telecom uh, appointment? Uh, uh, Mr. Soma, just. To by way of so in other words, do you, no, 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 I know. By way of background, no, no, just I want to say by way of background, sure. uh, I try to adhere to the policies set by the borough yeah. in terms of the public comment. So yeah. the way it reads is, you yeah, yeah. ask your questions, yeah, ask your thing, question. and I'll answer okay. everything at the end. Yeah. So is that all there is? Um, I don't know. So okay, all right, sure. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. So. So I would send out a few questions. So that's not, that's one. Two, does anybody, and I couldn't find anybody, I couldn't find one, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Given the fact that, you know, a quick Google search, maybe a little bit uh, more information would turn up that these people aren't very good with their customer service, 
last time someone got one of their friends appointed, it was a disaster at Bartle Hall, um, you know, that, that maybe you guys would look into that, right? And so, so my question is, what is the process? And hey, going forward, can you just kind of, even though you made the appointment, can you look, can you look into it a little deeper? Then the second, the second part of my question is um, back to the appointment of the Affordable Housing Administrator. Um, will you ensure and report back to the public or post online that there is some sort of diligence done around the selection process? Because it's just funny, like local insiders are just getting all the units um, at, a, at a kind of ridiculous rate and people are going and having campaign stops. There. You know what I mean? Like it's just fun. So can you provide some information of, around the selection process for that, uh, as well as can you ensure that they have one going forward, which they're required to? And then the third one is, uh, a little less than three years ago, Mr. Keller, you said you were going to, uh, your first priority was to rewrite the borough code uh, wholesale. And you know, if we've got one more meeting, can the public expect uh, wholesale rewriting of the borough code that you've been working on? Thank you. Mr. Zone, I ordinarily wouldn't do this just so that there's no back and forth, but I just want to be clear on one point. Sure. Go ahead. When you say the selection process of the units, are you referring to the units at Cedar Crossing or just generally affordable housing? I'm talking about um, going forward. No, no, right, right. Oh, well, but, but yes, and also at Cedar Crossing. With respect to Cedar Crossing. Sure, both. All right. but so, more diligence, the better, right? So I'll uh, I'll start answering sure. all the questions. Um, with respect to the telecom process, um, I did provide the mayor and council a memo at our workshop meeting, which will, I know Mr. Ward has requested a copy of that, but because until the award is done, we were still in active negotiation, which is why I didn't provide it to Mr. Ward, but after tonight, we'll provide that. And what that memo provides and, and inform the governing body as part of this decision-making process is how uh, uh, our IT, oh, thank you, how our IT director, uh, Mr. Ryan, and I ultimately came to this conclusion and made the recommendation to the governing body. And what we did do is actually uh, solicit quotes and speak to vendors, uh, anywhere but I think, what, five to six different vendors, uh, major telecoms to some of the smaller ones. We solicited quotes, we uh, outlined for them what our needs were in terms of bandwidth, their capability for VoIP, uh, as well as submitting uh, proposals, uh, I'm sorry, references, and, and documenting their experience in this. And that's how we ultimately came to the conclusion of Monarch Telecom. Um, one of the, the, the last and final points that I did was also my due diligence after uh, Mr. Ryan made his ultimate recommendation to me. And I sat in on the interviews with some of these vendors as well. Um, and what my last process was, was sp speaking to uh, municipal agencies and others who are engaged with Monmouth Telecom presently and asked for them and their experience and how their customer service has been, how the responsiveness has been, how their performance has been. Uh, and actually, I got nothing to, I won't say to my surprise, but I got nothing but rave reviews from all the entities that are using them. Uh, and I also spoke to entities that were not listed on the reference sheet, because typically you would only put the people that you think you know, you're happy with. So by doing a search on uh, resolutions on municipalities in New Jersey that have engaged with Monmouth Telecom, um, I contacted municipalities that were not listed on the reference sheet and again received the same rave reviews and glowing recommendations that Monmouth Telecom was a good performer for them. Um, now, the services, they provide a whole litany of services, though. So some of the services that you're speaking of perhaps may not be delivered properly. But they also came out to be the least expensive of all the providers. Um, in fact, one of the providers was upset and tried to come back with an even lower price and still could not match that price. Um, mostly because also I think Health Telecom is located here locally. They're located right in Red Bank. And so their costs in being able to run fiber to us are, are closer. Uh, they have most of their services and their infrastructure located right here in Red Bank. And uh, you know, they, I think they uh, have demonstrated to us that their, their in-house technical team is going to be more responsive to our needs to be able to make sure that our soft phones, hard phones, infrastructure and responsiveness is uh, you know, most tailored to exactly what our needs are. So that's how we came up with the telecom process. And that memo of recommendation from the IT director will be provided to Mr. Ward so he can write whatever article he chooses to with that. And um, with respect to the Affordable Housing Administrator, uh, just to be clear, so this is the administrative agent for our affordable housing. Cedar Crossing is not included in that. Cedar Crossing is a project that was 
done differently. This is for affordable housing that is designated and set aside by developers. So Cedar Crossing was not a, a project that was uh, affordable housing set aside by developers. Uh, this would be for individual single family homes, units, apartments, condos for sale, for rent. Uh, units that are designated when a development comes before the borough, has it set aside and imposed on them. They are, man they are administering uh, the processes set out by state statute and prescribed exactly by state statute, ensuring that those units are marketed fairly uh, and all of their work has to also be overseen by uh, the Department of Community Affairs division that handles affordable housing. I can't say COA because COA itself doesn't exist, but the agency at the state that would have handled COA oversees these things. And so they have reporting requirements to COA as far as their marketing and their recruitment and their uh, their financial qualification process. Everybody has to present paperwork and do their thing. So um, so I hope that answers uh, the questions. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Ms. Viscomi. Mark, do you want to answer that other question? Ms. Viscomi. 25 Cedar Place. Um, question is, uh, I was get, trying to figure out how many, or do you have any metrics uh, as far as how many uh, code violations are hung up? Um, I'm just asking because I'm, I'm curious to see what my street's going to be looked at. You know, I'm tired of looking at a toilet bowl every time I walk my dog down the street. There's been a toilet bowl at one of my residents outside for two months. Um, I did go through the online process. Uh, so I'm just curious of how many other residents were, as I think in the last workshop in the last council meeting, you mentioned this new process of having the door hangers put up. I would suspect having a toilet bowl on your property outside is not really up to code, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, my other question is, I was curious to talk about metrics, how many um, buses at Cal Basie got ticketed for running their bus engine all day? Um, right now, there's a bus outside running with the engine on. I know, Mayor, you were um, totally against that. You did a little speech about it over the summer. But there's been numerous the buses. Speeches. I want to tell the chief to issue summonses. The well, how many have been issued? He's not like, here tonight, but I will remember. I got video of there. six concerts. I just buses. want to clarify. I think there's, because we've looked into some of these, there's some confusion about perception. Sometimes it's not actually the engine running. Some of these buses have a separate generator that is running. So it looks like the bus is running, but they're not idling. In fact, they're running a, jet, a separate generator um, as part of the function that that type of a bus. Uh, is supposed to run. So an engine or a generator is still remitting? The generator would not fall under the anti-idling. Okay. Anti-idling is it's for those motor vehicles. So that is generator, it good for the environment to environment? I'm sorry? Generators run, I, I can't speak to their environmental impact, but generators run, they're permitted to run, um, and so they're doing it so that way, uh, you know, they are able to power what needs to be powered. Well, even if it's permitted, my question is, is it environmental impact? I can't speak to the environmental impact. I, I would say, though, that not most of what is done in terms of vehicles and running a building, you know, everything has a carbon footprint. Um, I, you know, I, I can't tell you what Well, but I would suspect our goal is to mitigate that, right? The answer is it could be safe to assume that it is having an impact. Okay? Thank you. So are, are we getting any metrics as far as how many code hang on the right here or not? You are certainly free to file an open request and the code department will answer that for you. Perfect. And um, do you know that how long? Is it, is it up to code that I have to look at a toilet bowl every time I wash my dog? Is that is, is, it, is it okay for a resident to keep a toilet bowl on their property? Is that the answer is no, but I have a 23 seater street in Spiscomia. I We just instituted a new tracking system, so your your complaint is logged here as 1126, yep. 23 seater street, and it's been assigned to an inspector. Great, no, I, I waited two months because I was hoping you know, the town did something. Should be a summons, not, not a report after it's been there for more. Right? Something. Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor?